Hi everyone, welcome to CareerCon Monthly. This month we are looking all at work tech, um, so what it is, how it can help us, why it's important in the workplace and what it means for the future of work. Uh, I'm Jenny, I'm Head of People and Culture at Hundo uh, and I have the pleasure of being joined today by Joanna Blazinska, who is a career coach, strategist, uh, and with a real focus on the future of work, talent and careers. Um, so without further ado, welcome Joanna, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much Jenny for the introduction and I'm super excited to be here today. Amazing. Um, would you like to tell us a little bit more about yourself, a bit about, about your background? Yes, absolutely. Uh, so right now I am a career coach, career strategist. Um, absolutely enjoy the topic and, and um, love studying, researching the topic of the future of work. Um, and in the in my previous roles um, over the last years of my career, um, I was working uh, either in gaming industry or in hardware, right? So um, I started in gaming back in Poland in my home country and then uh, moved a little bit across the, uh, over uh, around the world and um, ended up working for Sony, so in PlayStation and for Google doing projects, really enjoying the project work. So uh, that was before. And then I transitioned into career coaching out of uh, pure passion for, for the subject. Okay, nice, nice. Lots going on there. Um, so without further ado, we will jump in with the questions. So uh, I'm sure you've seen them. <laughs> So that we're not uh, throwing them at you without any forewarning. Um, so obviously we know the future of work is evolving. Um, that's what we've talked about throughout all our all our series of CareerCon. Um, and what do you feel are the specific skills that are becoming increasingly more important? And how can we sort of identify and prioritise the skills that are going to be most relevant to career goals, especially for, for young people? Right. So I think, first of all, the, the approach to skills is, is changing, right? So before employers would value more um, the degrees, right? So the school, the specific school, right now, the employers are looking at what you bring to the table, right? What problems you can solve uh, yeah. for them, um, especially as work is transforming. We've got multiple different generations working together in the workplace. So all the skills we can bring together are, are important, right? Whether you're at the start of your career, but you're, for example, very uh, tech savvy, very digital savvy, or you're, you're to, towards the end of the career and has got the whole experience and lots of skills built over, over years, right? So right now, what I would say in terms of the specific skills, right? Obviously, we've got um, the kind of um, the hard skills, more technical skills, right? And... These will vary um, across different jobs, different roles that you want to, to take on or that you're thinking of, right? Maybe you want to become a programmer, right? So uh, coding, uh, different tools, right, will be still relevant uh, for you depending on those, on those career goals. Uh, however, what's, what's kind of becoming interesting is that the, the kind of our human skills, right, that used to be called soft skills, um, mm. are gaining importance, right? So people realize that how we collaborate, for example, is very important because that's how we build better results, better work environments, right? So collaboration, right? These times are very turbulent, turbulent and um, work is transforming, right? We see lots of tech being, uh, being released right now, lots of uh, disruption coming through because of AI, right? So adaptability and lifelong learning will also be the skill that employers used to maybe ask for implicitly, or it was a, a good thing to have once you are in, in a work environment. Right now they ask for it specifically, right? So they will ask for the skill and for the proof of the, your ability to learn, right? Um, other things, right? So yes, you will need to have um, the core skill of being digitally savvy or um, have understanding of data or being able to learn how to work with data and work with AI tools as they are being kind of developed and implemented right at work. Um, but also you will have to have the ability um, as a human being to manage those changes, but also uh, understand how, how you uh, as a person deal with change, right? So you will have some sort of levels of level of self-awareness 
but also the ability to, to manage change, right? So we see how the kind of the, the hard skills, what used to be called hard skills, right? Uh, some of them are becoming simply core skills that everyone has to have, like dealing with data, uh, the digital savviness, right? But what's gaining increasing importance are the soft skills, right? So um, emotional intelligence, um, lifelong learning, um, being resilient, being empathetic at work and collaborating well. Yeah, definitely. So are you touched on those sort of human skills there or also sometimes called power skills? Yes. Um, but in this sort of era of automation and AI, where, where there is this sort of huge shift happening as we know it, what what sort of skills from that set would you say are important or, or hold the most importance? And, um, you know, can you give a brief explanation of why and, and why you think they're the most or going to be the most important sort of soft skills we need? Right. So um, I think they, they kind of um, now we're, we're learning to, to call them human skills or power skills because I think we've all realized that they are very difficult actually to develop and very, very difficult to manage. I think as work is becoming transformed through tech, right, we are learning to engage differently with tech, right? Not necessarily for the people who, who are watching us, maybe in 10 years, they're not going to be they're not going to know what keyboard is, right? But they will have their headset <laughs> or will have some sort of uh, other ability to, to engage with tech, right? So we don't know how that interaction might look like for sure yet, right? We might have uh, the ability to understand what's being developed right now. And that's how we also can understand what, what human skills could be interesting. But I think the most important kind of idea here is to understand that we are not competing with tech anymore, right? We are, no one is kind of getting the jobs away from, from each other. We're kind of leveraging, right? So we're bringing the best of what humans can do with their skills, right? So one will be creativity, right? So we will be solving different, different problems and solving those problems differently. Uh, learning agility, right? So being able to, to always, um, yeah, to, to, to simply be able to, um, to navigate those changes and understand what skills we need to be learning next or what could enhance my current skill set so I can do my job better, right? So I can solve my prob the problem that I'm solving at work more efficiently, but also um, in a more creative way, right? Uh, then we've got collaboration, right? I think um, collaboration and social intelligence, I'm going to put them together in, the, in, in one category. Um, but I think it's really important to, to learn how we work, how best to work together, how best to bring results together, but also in a positive collaborative way. And also an aspect of it is how to build that rapport quickly with others, right? So imagine that you are on a, on a team that is at a company, but there is um, a product to build, right? Or, or some sort, sort of problem to solve, right? There is a team, uh, you know, launched because people know that you've got the skill set, other people have complementary skill set, and we all come together and we all need to work from day one on a problem, right? And, and um, deliver it quickly, right? So that fast uh, creation of rapport with other people will be super relevant. Um, other cultural intelligence, for example, we are working remotely now, so we are not going to be working from people from the same borough. They might be thousands of kilometers away. Um, so that, that side of things will be very interesting. And communication, right? So being really um, efficient at delivering, um, delivering written um, communication, but also verbal communication, sharing ideas in a, in a, in a way. So I would say these, yeah. but there is plenty of them. <laughs> yeah, there's there's so many, isn't there? Yes. I think it's really interesting because cultural intelligence, you know, 10 years ago, even five years ago, you, you wouldn't, even someone, you know, older like myself just wouldn't have thought to list that as a soft skill. And even the fact that now they're actually, there's a shift from calling them soft skills to actually giving them the credit they deserve as yes. human skills because so many people young people, you know, older people don't really understand that they might have these skills within them. They probably use them every day and they are actually really valuable. Yes. 
Um, and I think that's a big problem, certainly for younger people. I think, you know, older people probably are a bit more confident, but younger people are like, well, I can work in a team and I can lead a team. But is, you know, is that something that employers look for? So, I mean, in terms of that, then how do you think, you know, young people can demonstrate these skills um, to employers in their CV or during interviews and in the workplace and mm -hmm. sort of, you know, show that these skills are important and that they, they hold them themselves. Yes. And I, I love the point that you're making, right? That we do have them. We might just not fully be aware, right? So always raising yeah. awareness about what am I doing that has developed some a, a skill to me, right? That that I've I've developed that skill through maybe an activity that I didn't even realize was a, for example, an act of leadership that I, that I did a project, yeah. a vo um, for example, a volunteering project um, where you do something for your community because, because of a cause and the cause, a cause that you believe in, right. Might straight away demonstrate that you are a leader. You are demonstrating leadership, emotional intelligence um, and social intelligence, right. And, and a lot of humility on the way. Right. So, so I think, really kind of um, taking ownership of, of what you're doing and having those moments of reflection. What projects am I, am I involving? What's, what's my passion? What gives me meaning? What gives me the sense of um, happiness, of meaning in, in what I'm doing day to day? What causes am I passionate about that I've already gone and done something about, right? Also, what, what um, am I spending time on, right? If you are all the time learning. For example, now, if you love to engage with technology, love to learn everything and anything about AI, and that's where you spend time on, right? You are a lifelong learner, right? That, there, there is a tick if you look yeah. at, at job descriptions, right? That skill is a tick, right? So, and how to demonstrate it? Um, first of all, simply by, by really taking hold and, and taking ownership of everything that, that you're doing. So having those moments of, of reflection, of really kind of understanding um, that those experiences matter and those experiences inform your skill set, right? Um, if that sometimes is um, kind of unclear to you, you can always talk to other people, right? Maybe uh, have a mentor, maybe find someone that works at a company that you particularly would love to. Uh, experience working as right you can go and talk to them and really talk honestly about what all the experiences that that you've had right so so really reflecting on those on those uh, experiences um experimenting a lot with different uh, different experiences as well with different apprenticeships or uh different opportunities but also projects that you proactively engage i would say definitely that and then including them into your cv cover letter uh, with some sort of result and, and showing really what, what you've achieved, what you were able to accomplish there. Yeah, I think definitely if you if you are passionate about something and if you care about something and it's it's not in your mind a skill, but actually it is a skill. Um, yes, yeah, so that's the best way for you to understand that actually you, you've got these skills within yourself and now it's just how to, how to showcase them. So, I mean, with that in mind, how can our schools and our colleges uh, and parents sort of help young people develop these skills um, and, and keep them up to date um, from an early age? Is there is there like a, a trick to this? Do schools need to start changing their language about what you know what soft skills are? How, is is there is there a, a trick to to nailing that? Do you think or? Um, I think it's it's already changing. I've seen that definitely there is private sector kind of helping out of different courses from very early age of on kind of building social skills. So um, so definitely worth seeing, well, worth reviewing how how that works. But I think when it comes to really enable young people and, and helping them learn those skills, um, I would say, first of all, we need to empathize with them that they are growing in a completely different world. They will be interacting differently with technology. Uh, technology is part of their lives, um, which maybe we needed to to learn it first, right? And really kind of have the ability to know, to have known both worlds, right? So I think really a lot of empathy, a lot of staying on top of trends, right? It doesn't mean necessarily reading through all the reports that uh, big organizations and companies are releasing. However, 
maybe sticking to a couple of um, sources, a couple of, of uh, thought leaders that share that information, right? And then um, helping young people really kind of get exposure to different experiences. And I think experimenting and allowing people to, um, to, to be able to ask questions, to experiment, explore, but then also fail, get back up and then experiment again, I think, uh, and also um, allowing them to, you know, think critically, ask questions, right? So we do need to um, possess those soft, those, those soft uh, human skills, right? Uh, in order to be able to also enable other people. Uh, but I think definitely kind of allowing uh, young people to, to interact a lot uh, with others, to build different, different things together in a fun, in a play way, right? And um, yeah. learning through play, but definitely kind of through that exploration and that just uninhibited uh, creativity, fun, and yeah. And I think that there, there is, there is uh, that that could be the trick. Yeah, sounds good. Definitely. Um, and what skills do you think young people can develop to become more in innovative? put my teeth in, uh, and adaptable in a tech-driven work environment. Are there any sort of tips for that? Right. So in terms of um, becoming more innovative and adaptable, right? So I'll start with innovative, and I'm going to talk about one skill that I particularly like, um, and it's <laughs> called uh, combinatorial creativity, right? So this is when kind of people... It, it sounds sounds very fancy, but it's actually... It's when people experiment with different areas, right? And then they bring those th those um, different learnings together. They might not even be able to say that they are doing this, right? But because we learn from absolutely everywhere, right? By, you know, absorbing tacit knowledge, absorbing from our environments, from books, from courses, right? This is, it is about really kind of bringing different, uh, different, information together and building innovative solutions uh, through that sort of creativity of kind of bringing different insights right so it might mean that for example if you do music right some people might say well in the technological world ai will create some music why do you why do you do this right but actually it still builds the brain in a way which other subjects might not right so um and yeah. you might develop certain structures, certain way of ways of thinking and memory, right? That other disciplines might not, right? Then bringing it together with a, an engineering subjects, right? The connections that the brain does might be super interesting, right? And again, we might not be even able to uh, to fully understand that we are doing this, right? So all this to say, uh, really exploring different disciplines, I think. Um, having that that uh, curiosity, right? Asking questions, going and engaging into different uh, projects, right? I think that's where really that sort of creativity and innovative mindset uh, can can be built. Um, another way I would say is also kind of having growth mindset, right? This is a a, a term that many of you will definitely hear a lot. Um, growth mindset essentially says we are never born with a set fixed uh, set of skills, right? Uh, we are always developing those skills, right? So if today you feel you're not great at maths, for example, it doesn't mean that tomorrow through practice, through a lot of practice and really kind of focusing and learning, going deeper on that subject that you're not going to learn, right? So I think really having that belief um, it changes a lot and people are more uh, more able to one adapt and to innovate right because they will be able to to experiment to explore and have that kind of um more of a researcher and happy explorer mindset that's what i would call it right mm, and um what else yeah and i think that's that's also that another aspect could be building rapport with people right so really kind of through that social uh learning experiences right i think this is where People get innovative because they start exchanging ideas, but they also um, share different perspectives, different way of, of thinking about the world. So I think that's also another way to become 
innovative but also adaptable because now it's teamwork right so so we need to be adaptable when it comes to adaptability i think um again being exposed to different experiences i think that that definitely helps and really leaning into change right not not resisting it i know that sometimes there is the, the discomfort of change right it can be uncomfortable and it is at any age whether you're 14 34 <laughs> or whatever that might be it is uncomfortable but really kind of learning to to have that skill of of just of managing change and also of resilience right so so being able to to go through that change emotionally as well yeah i think that yeah definitely keeping an open mind and i feel i have hope that sort of younger people you know gen z teenagers they already kind of have those mindsets where i think like the older generation are quite set in their ways like and absolutely freak out at change like i know i'm one of those people so yeah i feel like i need to take on board some of these lessons myself we we um, we all do we all do and 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 this is why for example when it comes to uh, adopting ai right yeah um the main thing will be not really the the technology itself it's going to be people who will look at it and go do we really need that right so so it really is um I think that that we have that that's kind of natural um, first reaction, which which we need to work with. And um, the interesting thing that you said, Jenny, right, was was precisely uh, that those the younger people definitely have lots of information. They they kind of they are surrounded by lots of different technologies. They already see the change uh, happening. They yeah. have access to that information and know exactly what's changing. So um, so definitely that's that's a different way of seeing the world and also to to appreciating that they have those skills maybe already they 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 can hone in on yeah totally so then homing in on the actual work tech skills themselves or the tools um obviously they're massively used in terms of remote working hybrid working and since covid there's obviously been this huge shift to either fully remote or, or sort of hybrid working um so what tools would you say are really vital to make that sort of virtual communication easier or to bring teams together in more of a sort of hybrid working environment? Is there something that you swear by that you couldn't live without? Um, when it comes to tools, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give the answer that might not be very direct <laughs> to the question, <laughs> but my answer would be you can make any tool work as long as you've got the right kind of mindset around what remote work or hybrid work does, right? And how to conduct work in the way that works within remote work, right? Because rem remote work or hybrid work is essentially us not being in the same place, right? So we suddenly yeah. need to self-manage better, right? So I would say one of the the tools, the, the not necessarily tech tools, work tech, but uh, but tools would be self management. So really, kind of instilling those those um, kind of time management, self organization skills, right, and building building those, um, and and really understanding and finding clarity. And this is also a skill, and this is also very difficult for managers, right, building that clarity into their teams when where they they are able to change the way they work right and and give clear goals to their teams so their teams can work on meaningful things right and collaborate in an effective way so i think what actually what actually enables the tech to to do is is the tech to work for us is is us being able to be very clear about what we're building uh, what the kind of principles work are um, co-create uh, certain rules for the teams, right? And how we how we work, how to like um, to deliver certain projects, what outcomes we're working on, right? And then uh, being able to seek relevant information from other people, right? I think what's what's kind of missing sometimes is is learning from others just by observing them, right? Because we are not in one place, right? So making sure that when we are, right? 
and um, we are in one place, we, we kind of collaborate, but we also exchange a lot of knowledge, what's working, what's not working. So we have to kind of think about how we communicate uh, the best practices proactively. So I didn't yeah. respond yeah. to the question with, <laughs> with specific <laughs> tech, but I, 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 I would still swear by the fact that uh, we can take, you know, uh, Zoom, Google Meet or whatever tool and really make it work as long as the team and the manager know, know what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. We've gone, we're, we're sort of hybrid really at Hundo, but um, some of the tools we just swear by and we wouldn't go a day without them. Uh, and others we started to use and then they, they drop out and then you think it's really it's because the team are not fully engaged in using the tool. So as soon as it starts to drop, then it suddenly doesn't become that useful tool anymore, mm -hmm. whereas others are sort of we use day in, day out and, um, and we wouldn't be without them. But it's because there's really the team engagement and the team understanding of knowing exactly how this tool can, you know, can help us in our day to day yes. work. Um, and educators then, so sort of schools and colleges, how how do you think they can sort of best prepare students to cope with the challenges and the opportunities that will be presented by hybrid work settings? And, and what sort of skills are essential for, for professionals as well in that in that sense, people mm -hmm. that are already in, in the world of work and then people that are sort of going to start going into hybrid working or even just going straight into fully remote working, which is now really what we're looking at for people going into work. Um, there's not that many people now, I think young people were surveyed that would be quite happy to do a nine to five office job. You know, people want to work from home. So, but are they prepared? How can, how can schools help them get there? Right. So I think, um, I think a good starting point would be to understand what the challenges are and that those challenges will be changing as well as we are learning a little bit more about how to, um, you know how to how to build hybrid effective hybrid workplaces and uh, work environments mm, so a couple of challenges right so for example people are not necessarily always um fully aware how to self and, and don't have the skills how to self-manage right so really instilling yeah. those those basic employability skills right and helping young people um you know, take ownership of their time, set effective goals, um, work on projects where they actually deliver, uh, you know, implement. So, so really execute on a, on an idea, right. So really drive something to completion, right. Um, another way, um, and another kind of set of skills, I would say are the social, uh, skills, right. So again, how to proactively build conversations with people, how to, uh, make friends, let's say, at work with people. The topic of friends has actually been been uh, studied in 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 the set in this, uh, the context of um, of the workplace, and it's been very um, fascinating to me. Uh, so, really, how to set those, how to build relationships, right? Um, how to proactively reach out to people to to build those connections, right? Um, how to when they join a team, right? How to reach out to people, how to connect with them. Mm, um, so really being proactive about that, right? And that doesn't mean that it's only the young people that have to, the moment they, they come into the, the workforce, right? That they just have to do it, right? It's, it's us all collectively, right? Um, so I would say these um, and emotional intelligence, right? Because I think Sometimes um, in hybrid we lose the um, the ability to because we it's it's us working from home not necessarily always from from the office right so we sometimes lose the ability to really empathize with others and really understand what they might be going through in the very same setting that we are so I would definitely um, suggest um, working on 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 those skills as well. Yeah, hundred percent. I think you've definitely hit the nail on the head with the um, talking about employability skills. Um, that's certainly something at Hundo that we're feeling is is sort of lacking that students are not developing within an educational setting, and you know that's really really key. So yeah, definitely definitely agree. Um, so with that in mind, I feel like I've said that a hundred times already, but <laughs> what do you think, what skills do you think are going to be in the most in demand in the next sort of three to five years in, 
in terms of how fast the work environments are are changing like what's going to be the top three skills that young people need to be thinking about mm. developing or, or building top three i don't know if i can name <laughs> top three because there is so so oh, no. many uh, how many but but um i think one skill that and and this is um, in relation to your comments right now, right? Because there is so much change. I think anything related to emotional regulation, emotional agility, resilience, right, will definitely help people go through that period, right? So really thrive in this period rather than uh, than kind of feel a little bit out of control and always kind of out of touch because they might not be in the office, right? Because they work from home, right? So, um, and there's so much technology, right? Are they learning the stuff that will actually, the, the skills that will actually make them future-proof in a sense, right? Can they set goals right now, actually, or maybe things are changing so fast, right? So really kind of, um, I would say the emotional um, regulation, emotional agility, resilience. Um, however, out of the skills that are on the rise, and we see that from the reporting, we've got creative thinking, definitely. So really building um, those creativity skills that sometimes might not come from, um, you know, a subject at the uni or a course, right? But really from build, building, from an exposure to different experiences, right? So uh, becoming creative doesn't necessarily mean studying a year at a uni you know the subject that is called creativity it is kind of bringing together different experiences different perspectives different knowledge uh, then we've got analytical skills right they are um, they be they are becoming the, what is the core really of any role right now because we are seeing that everything uh, is becoming measured right like we can we can measure so many areas right now and um companies are measuring you know whether it's well-being you know if you see all sorts of for example openings you know the government is hiring a lot of data analysts right so um there is definitely a push for everyone to to become um to have that analytical thinking and be data savvy um technical literacy definitely is becoming a core skill but then we've got a whole set of of um skills that are those uh, human skills that we actually started from right so lifelong learning curiosity um what else do we have the emotional intelligence right so so really all those skills but also being motivated and being able to to self-manage have that self-awareness right so it's not really top three but <laughs> but a nice set of skills that i think if they are able to yeah. build to start building they will be fairly future proof um for the work future proof that's what we want um yeah I think the emotional intelligence one is particularly interesting to me because it's just not one that I necessarily would have thought of but actually it, it sort of lends itself to so many other skills as yes. well um and again people probably a young person might not even actually think well what does emotion you know what does emotional intelligence mean but I feel like now people have a better idea thank you very much um i think our time is up but thank you so much that's been super interesting um i've learned a lot of new words i feel like i need to go away and uh, do some research myself or, or book in another chat with you to find out more um so obviously everyone can watch career on on demand and uh have a look at everything else that we're doing this month um and where can people find you joanna where is best what's your social links Yes, so uh, people can find me on LinkedIn, uh, Joanna Blazinska, and um, that's that's where I'm principally at. Thanks so much. Perfect. Thank you so much thank for joining you. us, and thank you so much for your time. That's been very, very interesting, and um, yeah, a great one for everyone to catch up and watch. Thank you so thank much. Thank you Jenny. so much. Thank you, Hando. <laughs> Take care. Bye. Bye.